welcome one to this actually airing when it should episode of of, of the show so that's fantastic uh, episode 77 overall episode 814 of the current se season season series still dealing with pugma still dealing with highways and byways uh standard disclaimers apply as usual i don't speak for ryan's path nor is this project official material although i'd love it if it were all views and opinions expressed are my own and this material will be available to buy on um canis minor i'm merely a grateful fan with a platform i am also uh disabled i do experience unpredictable and erratic muscle spasms uh, that can affect the muscles of my jaw or throat, any muscle group really, but particularly if it's like the head up, uh, obviously you can see it on camera. So I will try to monitor that and if it becomes um, you know, painful for me or uncomfortable for me or I think it might be extremely uncomfortable for you to watch, I'll just close the camera feed. Uh, it can lead to a worsening of my normal stammer or slurring of speech. Again, I, if that becomes an issue, I'll have to end the stream. I do also struggle with, mul with multiple trains of thought. So I will try to finish one before going on to the next. Uh, if you raise a point in chat, and please do feel free to interact with chat as much or as little as you want to, um, I will try to acknowledge that I've seen it, finish my current train of thought, and then um, address uh, your comment. Uh, yes, so, um, standard promotional stuff first, I guess. Uh, let's go with the Monday meeting notes being the best place uh, for updates of any kind for Onyx Path um, purposes. The current big push, of course, being the uh, reprint repro a go go over on Indiegogo to um, uh, fund a new print run of Trinity Continuum Core Book Scion, Book One Origin, and Trinity Continuum Aeon supplement for Trinity Continuum. Um, moving to a new printer means that they need to rework the files and Onyx Path are using this opportunity to implement errata changes, minor tweaks here and there that are already existent in, extant in the PDFs on DriveThruRPG. Those are not being made redundant, um, but just making them, uh, or as far as I'm aware they are, or they'll be updated to match the, the current physical core rulebook printing. Um, so there's parity across all of the releases, I guess. Uh, but obviously, having to rework the files gives Onyx Path a chance to, 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 to tweak the files and, and things to make them the best they can be at the current moment in time. Uh, last Friday's Pathcast was um, a discussion of the, the, the tweaks for the reprint run. Um, Next uh, crowdfunding campaign to be aware of, and I know there's at least one person out there excited for this. It's me. Uh, the Curious Cats of Mal for Realms of Pugmire. Um, unlike, to my understanding, uh, unlike in Pugmire, which is what we're talking about today, uh, where Monarchies of Mal was a rule book in and of itself, Curious Cats of Mal. Uh, will be a supplement for the Realms of Pugmire rulebook. It will take the material presented in the Realms of Pugmire, put a cat spin on it. You know, obviously there's new material introduced, um, I, but it, it is still a supplement rather than a core book in and of its own right. Uh, so if you are interested in playing a cat character, uh, exploring the politics of Mao, and the monarchies, or any of the, the stuff that you've previously been doing in the monarchies of Mao, but in Realms of Pugmire, uh, please swing by back a kit uh, next month. I say next month, I don't know when next month, just next month, uh, to, uh, and pledge your support on Funded by Back a Kit for the Curious Cats of Mao. And you'll make at least one person happy. It's me. Uh, check in other updates and things that will be important. Uh, right, the schedule for the rest of the week, in case you are interested in the Twitch schedule. Again, I'm trying to cut down on the amount of time I spend talking about the, the weekly weekly update because a lot of it's covered in the uh, news, Onyx Path news that Matthew Dawkins puts out weekly. Um, but all of these times are in EST today, obviously, 9am. It's about 10 minutes ago. Me, congratulations, you've showed up. Imaginary points to you, Gold Star. Uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m., so Wednesday at 9 p.m., uh, Scarred Lands, Sins of Shelzar. Uh, Thursday at 5 p.m. Now, 
If you do like this show and you are a long time watcher or you're just tuning in for the first time, be like, hey, that seems like a pretty cool uh, concept. Um, obviously, the, uh, a large part of the show is to break down any barriers around writing community content that, and try to help you with your own community content project and inspiration and, and new ways of thinking about things. Um, this Thursday, 5 p.m., uh, is a Game Jam kickoff for Sora Path Nexus material. This is organized by one of the streamers. Uh, I don't have Discord open right now to give you a, a definite name. I think it was Corbin, or the awkward GM, but uh, I could be wrong. Um, so if you are interested in writing community content, please do swing by Thursday at 5 p.m. twitch.tv slash the Onyx Path um, for, for that. Friday at noon, they came from the Cyclops' Cave, Warriors of Legend. Uh, Friday, 9 p.m., Hunt, Hunt of the Vigil, Fear and Loathing. Sunday, 6 p.m., Silent Second Edition, Godsend. And Monday, 8 p.m., Hunt of the Vigil, Stuffed. Rounds out the week. Now, if any of that seems interesting, or if you can think of a, um, a glaring omission in the schedule, and you've got something that you would like to add to it, um, the... Arts Path are always happy to, are always looking for show pitches, but also uh, if you uh, don't, or if you're uncomfortable doing live material, but you produce edited content on YouTube or any other video posting site, I guess, uh, swing by the Monday meeting notes. The link is in the chat box, uh, and um, drop a comment pointing them towards your RPG media. Uh, they are always Onyx Path are always looking for for new voices to to amplify in. You know, publishing their, promoting their games, but also, you know, the RPG sphere. Uh, oh, also, I guess, uh, slight trigger warning from the Monday meeting notes. If you have a thing about Lepidoptera, um, moths specifically, uh, please be aware that they're all over the place. Um, there is an ARG going on right now, I, I'm assuming, uh, for uh, a new game. Uh, oh yes, almost on sale this week. Operation on sale was Wednesday. Operation Fabric Spy for they claim they came from classified, being the um, this month's tasty bit. And then the uh, at press stuff. This the stuff that's listed as at press in this week's Monday meeting notes. The reprints, obviously. Uh, Zion Origin, Trinity Continuum Core, Trinity Continuum Aeon. Uh, Werewolf 20 Apocalypse Record Book and Screen and Booklet, Exalted Essence, Exalted Essence Screen, Exalted Third Edition, Ex Exigence, Trinity Continuum Anima, uh, Mage 20 Lore of the Traditions, they came from Classified and from the Cyclops' Cave, Sign Once and Future, Exalted Third Edition Across the Eight Directions, and Tasty Bit, they came from Classified, Operation Fabric Spy, again coming out on Wednesday to drive through RPG. A uh, side note about Across the Eight Directions and Once in Future. Uh, I believe it's Across the Eight Directions remains number one on Drive Through RPG, and Once in Future remains number eleven on Drive Through RPG. So that is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, yes, that is in fact correct. Or as of time of Monday meeting notes, anyway. However, with that all out of the way, I just need to mute the microphone for a moment and uh, blow my nose, and then we can get started with the show, with my standard recap of what Pugmire is, uh, for people who are unfamiliar with the game, uh, and then we will continue. I am back, and I have realised I need to hydrate. I've also just realized that OBS is showing my show notes. Luckily, there's nothing on them that you shouldn't see, but that is very confusing because that's not what it should be showing at all. Interesting. Hang on one second, I can fix this. I might need to restart the stream. That would be awkward. Uh, I'm just... Wait, do I? What? Okay. 
Apparently I have two Microsoft Word window captures set up, and I've just never realised. Interesting. Well, there we go. That should have fixed the problem. Yes, that fixed the problem. I need to remember to check the stream recording, just to see in case... Uh... No, I should be fine. I'll check it in anyway, but it should be fine. Uh, but there's nothing you shouldn't have seen there. Again, it's just my boring show nights and, and links and things. Okay, so uh, what is Pugmire? Pugmire is a... Um, what if D&D... &D, it's a tabletop role-playing game. What if D... With the pitch, what if D&D &D but dogs and cats and rats and a, very, a couple of other um, species uh, of animal. Um, and it uses the 5th edition... Uh, rule set as allowed under the um, open gaming license. So anyone who has played Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition can transfer over to Pugmire with relative ease. There are some uh, tweaks and some changes, some um, slight callbacks to older editions of 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 D&D uh, &D in terms of like, skill names and things. But by and large, it is a simple, uh, it is an easy and simple transition and um, it is a very fun game. Uh, for those who have not played D&D, what that means uh, is that pretty much everything is resolved with the roll of a 20-sided die or a d20. Uh, and on your couch sheet, you have a variety of numbers and uh, your, uh, in Pugmire, the person running the game is called the guide. Uh, your guide will tell you what number to add to the d20 roll. So it might be a, a, a strength check or a um, constitution traverse check, where if you are proficient in the traverse skill, you may add that and your constitution modifier to the roll. Um, and that will give you a number. And if that number is equal to or higher than the difficulty that the guide has set for the roll, you have succeeded. Congratulations, woohoo. Um, if it's an attack roll, uh, both your character and most things that you'll be attacking will have an armor class, a uh, defense, sorry. Uh, and again, if it's equal to or greater than that defense number, the attack hits, congratulations. Then you move on to rolling damage and the, your weapon or spell will tell you what dice to roll to determine how much damage you deal. Uh, once uh, a character's stamina is reduced to zero by damage being dealt to it, they are unconscious and unable to act until they rega regain stamina. It's pretty simple. Um, now, because it is based on the 5th edition rule set, there is some slight bias towards uh, encounters um, of a more combative nature, or combat encounters, if you will. I don't know why I bothered making it really fancy, fancily worded. It, it didn't need to be. Uh, so, uh, not all of the game, but uh, a, a large part of the in-depth rules, let's say, we are devoted more to combat than anything else. And that's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no judgment here. That works perfectly well for me for for a lot of reasons. Um, I like a bit of everything in my games and having that, that core um, there is great. But obviously, sometimes you might want to fight in a specific location for a set piece, a narrative set piece at the end of a, uh, of a level. Or um, you might just want to add a little bit of extra flavor uh, to your to your encounters or to, to highlight how the environment itself uh, can play a part in the story that you are telling. And that's where what we're doing today comes in. Um, as you can see, on, oh, I need to zoom in. Uh, as you can see, uh, last week, um, yes, that last week I didn't type write, write very much. Uh, la oh, last stream, um, we got into talking about how extreme temperatures can affect um, overland travel, uh, and then started work on um, weather modifiers. Uh, so I have 
one more weather modifier in mind, uh, and then we'll probably stop. We'll probably move on to a different kind of modifier. Dangerous, what? Dangerous. Uh, at um, all characters in the scene. Let's make a. Difficulty Again with capitalizing oh and so some question regarding reprint plans. Are there any plans to reprint the World Twentieth books or should all reprints be procured through drive through? Uh I can't speak for on its path. Um but from ha hanging around on the Onyx Path um, Discord server, the only reprints right now are the you know, Trinity, Zion, etc. And anything that has a, I guess, tr traditional print, pr not a deluxe version, but just like a traditional print run. Um, ones that you could go into a, a shop and buy. I don't know if you can buy the 20th edition Ward books in the States. I've never seen them for sale over here in the UK. Um, I don't have access to that many gaming shops, unfortunately, because it's not such a big deal over here. Um, and if it is, it's mostly just D&D, unfortunately. Uh, uh, so I would, I would probably just go for the drive-through reprints. Um, uh, a couple of uh, some people on the on this path Discord server have have because that the twenty for those who don't know the twentieth edition would um, anniversary twentieth anniversary edition would have done this books are enormous. You could build a house from them. You could certainly do a mischief with them. Um, and they do kind of fall apart after a while, but you can get them rebound, um, like re re rebound and uh, and whatnot. Um, when that does happen, um, but yeah, as I say, the, the, the core book reprint, the reprint a go go, the repro reprint a go go that's happening right now is specifically for those books with no further plans for like crowdfunding another reprint. Um, so apologize for this. The question work interrupted me asking the question at the start of the stream. No worries, no worries. Um, I don't have more information than anyone else at this point. I'm not privy to one Path's business plans. Unfortunately, so I can't. I'm sorry, I can't be uh, of more help. But I would, if you if you want a hard copy, I'd say just go for drive through, um, in lieu of anything else. Your deluxe V20 book is also old. The funding campaign for it predates Kickstarter. Yes, I believe that was like was the first one that did, wasn't it? I was at university when that came out. Good, good grief. Uh. Yeah, TLDR, probably worth just going through drive through for the physical versions. Uh, all characters in the scene. Uh, yes, so capitalizing game terms. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. You know what? I'm going to answer this question for myself right now because I have the time to. Please wait while I scroll through a quick start. Lowercase d in the quick in the in the quick start in the quick start adventure. So that's what I'm going for here. Let's make a difficulty fifteen. Uh, uh, sorry. Oof. I'm having some health issues right now. It's great. Also, the camera's blurry again. You need to properly intimidate the camera into behaving. Ah, yes, autofocus. Is it? It's clear on my end. Hang on. Check on the stream. Nope. Autofocus supposed to have kicked in. Turned out to fix itself. Yeah, sometimes it just takes a moment to... Um... To work. That's fine. Oh, I've got to be real, real careful with those, with those hotkeys. Uh, there we go. Saving throw. Or take 1d8 damage of the type appropriate to the will. Um, lightning for lightning. Eyes for... Is it ice or is it cold? Uh, why can I never remember this? 
Why are there so many things that are the same, but then so many things that are not the same? Cold! Haha! <laughs> Although arguably hell with the bludgeoning, to be fair. Because it's this is just the force of the hailstone. Etc. at initiative count zero. Or I guess at initiative zero. Uh so we've got precipitation messing with uh, rangers. Wind making it harder to use ranged attacks. Fog just making it harder to see. And... That's a weird noise. Uh, dangerous weather actually dealing damage. Uh, I will alphabetize these after when I go through and do editing and things of that nature. Uh, that's heading three. Okay, so so that's that's weather. Now we go with terrain. Uh, and after I've done weather and terrain, I'll be doing modifiers for things that are, like, focused around sense. S-E-N-S-E. -E, um, rather than physical things, like the weather. So, so, like, distracting sense or damp hair making it hard to smell things. Of that, you know... Things of that nature. Um, uh, so, terrain. Just copy this text. Uh, for particularly... Um, say for extreme instances of the following terrain types. Uh, this header will probably, you know, I'll just go up here. Um, each of the following uh, modifiers assumes a moderate instance of that weather type, terrain, etc. Or extreme instances increase penalties or difficulties of difficulties what else did I say of ranges or otherwise worsen the effect Treacherous. Oh, um, uh, as it is, it's some sometimes better to keep things simple. A general terrain modifier is included here. Difficult. All movement speeds. Uh, across the terrain. I phrased it that way just to account for, you know, what, if I can fly during this encounter, well then you'll, that's not halved because you're not crossing the terrain. But it puts it in the same, um, it phrases it the same as all of the other modifiers, which is kind of what I was aiming for. Uh, 
I guess technically uh, I know I want to keep these to one sentence but I don't mind having this as a second sentence because it is a very niche edge case um, my characters treat the air as difficult terrain there we go uh, treacherous. So, uh, I also had a thought for unstable. Um, characters moving further than their base walking speed must make a difficulty. 15 dexterity saving throw. Awful preen? Preen is not a word, Bubbles. Awful prone. Um, uh, once they exceed that limit. Phrased that way, purely to account for things like the dash action uh, or extra movement elsewhere. I'm trying to keep this as, as future-proof, or, or as, uh, future-proof is the wrong word, uh, as generic as possible to allow for other homebrew content and community content to be included uh, alongside it. So if there are other ways of ga gaining excess movement beyond just dashing, this should theoretically um, account for that. Uh, and then unstable ground. Oh, actually, this might this will work. I think better for unstable. Treacherous is going to do some pet, some damage. Um, well, actually. So, yeah. Um, all characters in the on thinking things like water walking and whatnot for this. All characters on the affected terrain must make a same save. Uh, sorry, please bear with me. I'm just going to check. Some oh, nope, there it is. Good thing I checked. Uh, what would the what a good condition be? Yes, that. Uh, or be immobilized. Or become immobile. But I phrase it that way to account for the condition name. Uh, can I capitalize the condition? There we go. Uh, or become immobile as the terrain. Um, all or similar appears beneath them. So I'm going to have to add a second sentence to uh, explain how to get out of that condition. Um, uh, 
Is there really any difference between that and falling prone? Not, not particularly. Uh, well, I mean, prone takes half your movement. I could, I could phrase this to be it requires all the movement. Awesome that appears beneath them. And oh, uh, why I I I butt myself into a corner. Wanted to keep this simple with a single sentence. Um... Mm. Chat considering doing something like this. Don't do what I've just done. Uh, I'm trying to see how much of this I can keep as a concept and how much of it I have to throw out and I'm quickly coming to the conclusion if I want this to be a single sentence thing it's it's just, it's all out. It's all out. Um, Characters who move further than half their base walking speed um, fall through a hole and become immobile until they use their entire speed to get out. Aha! A hole. Also means it's not the same mechanic. Treacherous is you might fall out, you might slip and fall. Unstable is you will definitely fall in a hole if you move too fast. Uh, I'm going to rephrase this as fragile. Other things like, you know, personally, and then use two sentences. I, I mean, I could, yes. Again, it's just, um, I've, I've used modifiers like this in my own games. Uh, I never typed them out, I just wrote them on index cards, which I've since lost, so go me. Uh, and, it, you know, it, just having it as a one sentence modifier makes it far easier to remember. Also, as I said, it makes it so it's not the, it's not the same kind of mechanic. I'm trying to keep things, make things thematic and different. Uh, treacherous, fragile. Um, so I guess treacherous and, treacherous and unstable would be the same thing. Uh, vicious terrain. Characters moving through this terrain. Take 1d4. Uh, slashing. Yes. Yes. For every 10 feet, they move. So the idea being that it's not like the entire battlefield. I mean, it could be, obviously. Whoops. Um, but more just terrain. Bits of the terrain are vicious terrain and will hurt you as you move across them. Uh, so generic all movement speeds halved. Standard difficult terrain modifier as found in the core rulebook. Fall prone if you move too far. Fall through the ground if you move too far. Take too much damage. Take damage if you move too far. Or just take damage when you move. Um, I think that should be good enough. Um, right, we go with scent.
damper. Um, all characters have a minus two penalty. The wisdom notice rolls. Involving smells. So that's if it's a very foggy encounter, you just can't smell things as good as well because of the air being damp. Um, distracting sense. Um, any character who. Uh, Attempts a scent based uh, just a notice check. So it's an ability check, not an ability roll. Um, Confused at the end of that next. Thinking here for like sensory overwhelm, uh, bombard, uh, being overwhelmed by sensory stimulus, like I am in re regular everyday life, except in a combat um, situation, obviously. That might be a bit worse. Uh, so it just you just lash out because you can't focus because something in the air is just overriding your brain at that moment in time. Um. However, at the um, other end of the scale, Characters have an advantage. Uh, wisdom notice checks. Uh, involving smells and sounds. Because it just travels better in cold air. Who knew? Uh, sounds. Uh, echoes, I guess, would be a good one. Um, again, when I when I had the idea to do this, yes, I'm just procrastinating, so I don't have to go ahead and do the um. The new callings. Uh, it w these are uh, these are just supposed to be really simple modifiers. You have two, maybe, uh, for each encounter. So they're not. It was never supposed to take a long time to write. I just got into the weeds last week a little bit. Uh, echoes. Are there any conditions I can leverage here? I don't want it to just be another... Do you have a minus one to your... Aha, I know. Um, uh, no character can apply... I know. Uh, I threw it. Filtering it out. No mind. That oh, was terrible. Scrapping it. go back to the confused slightly different um a character who botches a roll uh, a check you know i'll just write it all out ability check back roll Saving through. Uh, we'll leave saving throw off. Um, an ability check or attack roll. In 
confused until the end of the next bit. Because I, again, it's just standard instances. So if it's if they're extremely loud and plentiful echoes, I guess uh, you could you could reword that to any character who fails is confusing to the end of their next turn. Um, I realize this has more just become an air thing. Um, I guess air quality is a working title for now. And then ambiance, I don't know. What other conditional modifiers for terrain effects could we go with? I mean, we could just go with loud, to be fair. All wisdom notice checks involving sounds have a disadvantage. Sometimes, I know I went slightly into the weeds last week. That's my phrase of the day, apparently. Um, last week, la last stream about why I want to do st stuff other than just his disadvantage. But sometimes um, simple is best and it works. Uh... Oh, apologize. Uh, and as a reminder from I believe I mentioned this last stream. Well, and obviously people who do not know. Uh, making a roll with an advantage or a disadvantage is you, you roll the d20 twice and you pick the higher or lower result, respectively. Um, so having a disadvantage here makes it less likely that you'll succeed. Um, but having a negative modifier makes it more consistent that you won't succeed. Also, a negative modifier equates to an increase in difficulty if you prefer to think of things in that way. So a more or less, this is, this is kind of reductive broad strokes, but a, a minus two penalty more or less equates to a plus two increase in difficulty. There are probably a few edge cases I'm not thinking of right now where it doesn't, but just as a rule of thumb. Okay, uh, echoes, loud. Um, as this is just the catch all category, uh, dry heat, uh, characters um, further than their base. Uh, walking speed. In a cumulative uh, minus one penalty to their ability checks and attack rolls. lasts until uh, the end of the next sleep. Let's make sure I'm not doubling up over here. Yeah. So, you know, it's heat exhaustion more than anything. If you push yourself too, too hard, Should I reword this to account for constitution scores? I 
would like to for just thematic reasons more than anything. But is there a way I can make that easier? Characters moving further than their base walking speed. Plus their constitution score. There we go. Uh, on their turn. It's a bit long and wordy, but it should work, I guess. Uh, anything else that I can think of? think so. If I think of anything else I can add it later in the process, but I only wanted three or four for each one anyway, so that works out. Example encounter modifiers. Uh, so that's heading Three. Uh, heading three it is, I guess. Arctic. So we could have... Oh. Bog. Lizard. Difficult. Uh, I don't know why I'm capitalizing. Deep snow. Or treacherous. I have forgotten how to spell words. Or treacherous slash vicious ice. Well, fragile as well, I suppose. It's like these were all written with this kind of thing in mind. Um, cold air. Bog. Such a good word. Not in the UK slang sense of toilet or water closet, but like peat bog. That kind of thing. Um, so it could it, you could have precipitation for heavy rain, but. Um, More likely to be difficult to rain. Uh, it's almost certainly going to have damp air. Air quality. I don't think that one needs an explanation, to be fair. Uh, and then, oh, to be fair, I could have. Uh, oh, I'll go here. Dangerous. Biting insects. That deal piercing damage. I typed dessert, took one look at it, went, that says, sorry, I typed desert, took one look at it, went, that says dessert, and then had to do the double take, and was like, no, no, that's right. I'm, I'm right. I was right the first time. Um... So, difficult sand, or 
I guess fragile for quicksand. Not that you typically find quicksand in the desert. Ignore me. Um, <laughs> hidden ruins, though, I do find those occasionally. Certainly in in, in fancy role playing games. Uh, or fragile. Dry heat, obviously. Hot air. So obviously, with, uh, there's some artistic license going on here, but I I wrote them, so I can do whatever I want. But I'm just trying to provide, um, like inspiration for people to take these rules and and like think of them in a slightly different way, make them their own. I guess precipitation. Why did that not default to normal? That's interesting. Uh... Oh, dangerous. Right with the biting insects. Let's just put biting creatures. Uh, the terrain. Difficult, thick undergrowth. Vicious, thorny undergrowth. Distracting sense. Um, laurel sense, I guess, just as a sp specification for people who like that kind of thing, which is totally fine. I guess that could just be heat, because sometimes it'll be a humid heat like it would be in a rainforest. I realise I put jungle and then rainforest, but... Rainforest. Um... The following... Um, are provided as inspiration for your own games and can be tailored as you see fit. Because if I'm making a book of player of options, of tools, uh, by all means go ahead and make what you will of them. I am not terrible. I'm not that attached to things. Also, I can't stop you. I don't know what you're using these for at your table. Could be doing anything with them. Uh, I'm just going to separate these out for my own peace of mind. These modifiers are intended to represent abstract, intangible concepts. For the most part. Obviously, terrain modifiers, a little bit less so. Um, and should be used alongside... Features that can that grant cover. Grant. 
Oh, right. I had another throwing uh, one I wanted to do. Elevators! Um, more so than the other categories here. These modifiers can be applied to individual parts of the battlefield. of applying the hole. Uh, elevated. That crawls made against characters lower than those on this terrain have an advantage or oh, are made with an advantage. Could impose disadvantage on return attack rolls, but they're probably going to have cover instead. Let's give them cover instead. Um, and characters on this terrain benefit have a. Plus two bonus to their pot. To their defense. Benefit of cover. There we go. Uh, I realize that I've never actually checked if. Well, I mean, I have obviously historically checked, but I can't remember off the top of my head if the cover rules are included in the book. I assume they are, but assumptions and all that. I believe there's an index somewhere. Stop making weird noises downstairs. It's upsetting. Oh god. A mistake has been made, chat. 129 uh, references, instances of the word cover as itself and parts of other words, including recover and discover. So that's on me. what happens when you don't run a game regularly for some time. Please wait while I continue to click through this document and make it vaguely interesting while I do so. I swear I do know what I'm talking about most of the time, but there's just some things, you know, that... Again, it's one of those things where it's close enough to a game I'm familiar with that I can I get most of it right and then sometimes I just cross pollinate cross contaminate my games and that's on me and I'd rather tell you a a right thing than a wrong thing there we go uh yes Terrain counts as cover for characters uh, on it but against attacks from non elevated sources. Ha! Even better! I was going to have, uh, where is it? 
use alongside terrain features that grant cover. Um, uh, for ease. Recommended that you use two or three of these modifiers. Use at most two or three of these modifiers in a single encounter. Boom! Advice has been given. Uh, I realize this may be a short stream. I don't know, I haven't quite decided yet. I, I might think of something else to talk about that isn't callings uh mostly just because my my headspace right now i'm going through some personal stuff you don't need to know any of that but it's not in a place where i'm comfortable enough to fully explain um how i go about writing callings anyway so please bear with me on that front uh yeah anyway so um i guess sidebar it please note some elevated terrains may Uh, require a strength saving throw. That'll be the best way of phrasing that. Uh, please note. Oh, I guess I could just do this. Precarious. Characters who are dealt more damage than their constitution. That's that could be quite high. Uh, dealt more damage than half their constitution ability score. Or are struck with a triumph. Must succeed. Uh, must make difficulty fifteen strength aim throw. Uh, or be knocked prone. Um, please note some elevated terrain is also precarious. Uh, is an exception to the guidance given above about using a maximum So that's just in that's included just to avoid uh, guys having to think on their feet about what happens if someone is clinging onto a tree, for example, and gets knocked out of it. There's a rule for that already included. You're welcome, guides. Um, guess I'd be remiss. Without, if I didn't include woodlands and urban um, environment types. Uh, let's go with. Closely packed buildings. Uh, 
Oh, scroll too far. Where is it? There we go. Can't bear all distracting scents. The smells of the city. Get it? Sights like of the city, but the smells. Oh, I'm quite proud, proud of that. That's mildly entertaining. Loud. Nearby crowds. I guess technically it could be echoes as well. Uh, and then woodland. Which is probably going to be your most common, let's face it. Uh, we're not going to have any extreme weather effects. Go with difficult or treacherous. Why can I not spell treacherous consistently? What is going on with me? Um, pick undergrowth. Elevated and precarious. Three branches. Probably fine. It's just supposed to be a generic encounter set, so that yeah, works. Particularly because then you're including cover and all of that stuff. Anything else, would anything else suit? I think it's all good. Should be fine. Okay, so I need to reword something up here. Aha! Um, thematic groupings of effect. But each can be um, applied to a wide variety of in game sources. list of example um, encounter biomes with suggested rules can be found at the end of this section. And there we go. So if I open the navigation pane so we've got vehicles, chasers, environment and weather modifiers, backgrounds, travel spells. I think all that's really missing is the, uh, or are the callings. I'm just glancing at the time. I don't know if I can think of any particular other modifiers I'd like to include. The danger, of course, is writing so many and then you're like, well, this is not going to apply and this is just redoing something else. Uh, particularly, like, as I've demonstrated, you can reflavor biting insects as dangerous... Da you can reflavor dangerous weather, lightning strikes, into biting insects. Um,
overland travel, extreme heat, extreme cold. Um, risk of disease. PDF zoomed out. That's weird. Very strange. Um, uh, as with extreme cold. The following changes. Uh, the condition ends when character succeeds at three. Difficulty 15, constitution saving throws. Attempt every time they sleep. They sleep and and gain an advantage by resting all day. Uh, while sickly, character has one of the following effects. Oh god, can I, am, I, am I really going to nest a bullet list? Bullet point list? Absolutely not. Uh, well, sickly. One of the characters' ability scores is reduced by two. Own their ability score modifier. And any derived values, such as stamina. There, proficiency bonus is halved. Hello, unauthorized user. Good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm just using the um, semicolons because it's more of a longer list than perhaps I'd like to write. Uh, that looks awful. I think this should be a comma. This is fine. Their proficiency bonus is hard for... Let's just say... Maximum stamina... Reduced by 10. Guides choice. Um, guides are encouraged to create their own diseases mechanical effects. You can go here as inspiration. So, kind of peeling back the curtain a little bit here. Um, 
when writing content. Specifically, of course, in this instance, community content. But homebrew works as well, because it's basically the same thing. Uh, if you can leverage something that already exists to do the hard work for you, uh, there's no reason not to. Obviously, with community content um, on this instance, Canon's Minor, but on any of um, Onyx Path Publishing's community content platforms, you are able to reprint or to, to reproduce um, rules text. You shouldn't reproduce the whole rulebook, obviously, but where it's useful to do so, you can do so. Um, obviously, here I just copied my own text, but if, if, if something exists, uh, or you want to make a, a new condition um, that isn't quite covered by the rules, but is sort of close to one of the others. Um, you can be like, you can copy that text, and then, as I did with Risk of Disease, you can say, as with whatever rule you're referencing, but with the following changes. Um, and then you specify how that's different to extant material. Uh, Obviously, when doing so, it's always worth checking that there's nothing that else that reproduce that does what you're trying to do, um, or if there are a couple of things that do roughly what you're trying to do, uh, you can either reference all of them. It gets a bit messy. I would I would say if you're going to reference something, reference one thing, uh, but you can then use those other things to uh, inspire how you word the mechanics, let's say. Or you can reference those mechanics when writing the new mechanic, but you should only directly reference one mechanic in terms of like, as with whatever. Um, for things like this, particularly where I'm trying to provide a toolkit for, for a guide to use, the, the, the less page flipping that they have to do, the better. So uh, just cuts down on overhead, uh, mental overhead. The guides will always have a lot to be thinking about anyway. So having having less stuff to keep track of uh, mentally is going to help them out a lot. Um, I think those are really the... the main um, to be fair I'll include starvation just for completion's sake because that's also a thing and possible oh, it's not really an overlap it's not really a modifier is it starvation amazing publisher no it's Microsoft Word um, there are word templates for most things um Sorry. Rewind. I'm writing my first draft in Microsoft Word, and a lot of com I know some community content writers who or who just publish through Microsoft Word. Uh, if you get comfortable using Microsoft Word sections sectioning, um, uh, you can and and use correct headings. You can export PDF book uh, PDFs with bookmarks and, and um, a lot of a lot of cool um, stuff. Uh, I use Affinity Publisher, Affinity Publisher, uh, for my own stuff because uh, I needed it for one book, and I have to justify the expenditure. Uh, that was a book of my own writing that was entirely unrelated to Onyx Path material, so don't worry about that. Um, but just be aware that if you are looking to use Microsoft Word for, uh, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but if you're using it to put to write community content and export it as a PDF and then um, go back and do like a, a collected version, depending on how many bookmarks you have in that collected version of your community content, you may in fact uh, run up against the fact that Microsoft Word has a limit to how many um, bookmarks it can export. Uh, you're not bothering at all. Um, uh, feel free to ask anything you can think of relating to playing or running Ice Path role-playing games right here. Or, or writing material or anything to spark a conversation. Uh, I have regrettably run out of stuff to talk about for this stream. Uh, I've done the section I wanted to do. 
Uh, and this does mean that my procrastination must reach an end. And uh, over the next two weeks, I do need to refresh myself on how I pro how I wrote the callings for Morty Corgi's Acid Chanties. Also, I just... Here's a thing about brains, chat. Brains go wrong sometimes. And for some reason, when I first read the title Morty Corgi, uh, I thought it said Monty Corgi. I do not know why, but it's stuck in my brains, Monty Corgi. Uh, I apologize to everyone involved in... Morty Corgi, uh, in both Morty Corgi products, because it is clearly Morty Corgi, uh, for getting that title wrong consistently for quite some time. Uh, I've rewired my brain as best I can to get the right title, but there we go. Uh, but yeah, so, so so the show is, is bi-weekly, so theoretically, the next stream will be on, oh god, the calendar, on the 13th. Brain hurty, totally understand. Good happens a lot um so on the 13th of february theoretically uh, i'll be back with the next episode of the show and we'll be talking about callings and as i said before i will be uh writing a, a road warden calling and a full outlaw calling um for players who want that experience uh which will be probably the end of the material uh, in this book, and then I'll have to think of something else to do. I might go back to Scion. I might do my um, my my Scion hero adventure after promising it for quite some time. Sorry, it's an important text. Okay. Rad. Uh, so, uh, to, to recap today's show, go through my outro. To recap today's show, today we've just continued discussing environmental and terrain modifiers uh, for spicing up your Pugmire encounters. Um, again, this material will be available on Canis Miner eventually. Uh, I'm well aware that I need to upload the uh, A Ball to Die For adventure that I that I elaborated on and uh, that I expanded upon um, if you have missed the start of the show or you want to rewatch it you can rewatch uh, if you are a twitch subscriber uh, you can on twitch.tv slash on path uh, you can watch the video on demand as soon as I'm finished streaming uh, if you are not you must wait a week uh, where you can then watch it at the same twitch channel or if you swing by youtube.com slash at comrade bubbles uh, the behind the screen playlist season 8 brackets Pugmire bracket will uh, have this video in it amazingly I remember to upload last stream only 8 days after the after it aired, should have been 7 but I'm usually busy on Tuesdays so typically it goes up on the Wednesday instead uh, so the show it, the, this, the season so the series so far is available to watch on YouTube in its entirety um if you were not here at the start, you'll have missed me talking about the Monday Meeting Notes. Uh, so the Monday Meeting Notes, if you're unaware, are the uh, the weekly uh, update about how Onyx Path is doing. Uh, and it's a discussion of projects releasing that week and crowdfunding campaigns. And the big, the big thing to note is that the current crowdfunding campaign continues. Um, as of time of recording, uh, you have 18 hours if you want to guarantee yourself a hard copy of Trinity Continuum Core Scion uh, Origin or Trinity Continuum Aeon with the uh, reprinted errata material uh, incorporated within the game text or within the within the book text. Um, if you can't back it now, that's fine. This is simply a reprint. It is not new material. It is just um, Onyx Path Publishing are moving to a new printer. So they need to update the files and they're taking that opportunity to rework them slightly to incorporate errata and long-standing tweaks that have, have, have been discussed internally. Uh, the path casts for I think the past couple of weeks have been discussing what's actually going into this reprint. So uh, check those out. Links for which are, I believe, in that path note, in the Monday meeting notes, and they're on Spotify and Podbean, I think. Certainly Podbean, maybe Sp I hope Spotify. Um, the next crowdfunding campaign will be for the Curious Cats of Mao. It will be on Backer Kit, or funded by Backer Kit in February. 
Uh, that is a supplement for the realms of Pugmire, unlike in the first edition, where Monarchies of Mao was its own rulebook. Curious Cats of Mao will be a supplement for the realms of Pugmire core book. Uh, and uh, it's super exciting, and you should all go out and buy it as soon as you possibly can. I may be biased. For reasons. Um, on Wednesday this week, the... Uh, there was a taste of it, for they came from Classified. It's Operation Fabric Spy. Did I say Sky earlier? I may have said Sky. Operation Fabric Spy uh, as another taste of it for the They Came From Classified. So check that out if you're interested in the They Came From Classified line. Uh, if you do enjoy the show, uh, I do stream on Twitch. Comrade Bubbles, you can click if you're on desktop. Uh, I believe it works on mobile, maybe. Uh, you can click the title um, where it says at Comrade Bubbles, it'll take you to my channel. Uh, I mostly stream video games, but I'm happy to talk about role playing games in general and writing and, and things of that nature. I'm also on Blue Sky, Comrade Bubbles. Blue Sky. Social. Uh, B Sky. Social, sorry. Um, also, Tumblr and co host, but. Uh, uh, I should be back in two weeks' time. If you have any lingering questions, comments, criticisms, feedback, uh, I will be around for a few minutes after the stream, after the post, while the post roll rolls, uh, just so you can see what's coming up next on the sh on the channel, um, and I can address them then. Or if you are, um, oh gosh, uh, I don't know the, I don't know the command off the top of my head to bring up the Discord link, uh, but if you have lingering questions, there is an Honest Path uh, official Discord where Honest Path writers uh, and whatnot get involved. I see that follow in my, o in my OBS dashboard. Thank you so much for that follow um, on my channel. Uh, I, I don't see that information for Honest Paths on Honest Paths channel. Um, uh, not in my, oval, my layout anyway. Uh, yes, so I'll be back in two weeks. We'll be discussing callings in Pugmire and how I go about writing them. Um, but uh, until then, um, please do stick around for the post roll to see what else is going to what else is coming up on the channel. Uh, a couple of, of things to note that the it's on the schedules, but not the promotional material. Um, there is on Wednesday. Wait, what? I caught the back button on my mouse. Apparently, it was very annoying. Uh, you know, I just run through the schedule again because why not? Uh, this show currently ending. All these times are in East EST. Wednesday at 9 p.m. Scarred Lands, Sins of Shells are. Thursday at 5 p.m. Story Path Nexus Game Jam kickoff with a couple of the um, Twitch uh, streamers uh, for the channel. Uh, Friday at noon, they came from the Cyclops' Cave Warriors of Legend. Friday at 9 p.m. Hunter the Vigil, Fear and Loathing. Sunday 6 p.m. Sound Second Edition Godsend. And Monday 8 p.m. Hunter the Vigil, Stuffed. Which again, mentioned this last time. Hunter the Vigil and Stuffed in the same thing is very unsettling. Um, but if you are interested in any of those, please do stick around for the post roll to the sweet, sweet promotional graphics. But I have been Ryan, I am Ryan, and I will continue to be Ryan until I legally change my name, if that ever happens. Um, but uh, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate the support. Please do safe, stay safe, stay healthy, stay wholesome. Much love to you all, and I shall hopefully see you in two weeks' time. Keep an eye out on Honest Path social media for that announcement. Or if you're following the channel, turn notifications on. You'll get an email notification. Goodbye. <laughs>